ready for another MPG Highway Test Drive? This week's victim is a 2018 Toyota Camry XSE. It's got the V6 engine under the hood, and boy, oh boy, it's got some scoot. The interior, whoo, it's sweet too. Let's see how she does out on the highway. This is the second week of December. It's about 40 degrees, and we got the first snow of the season here in Jersey yesterday. I'd say we got maybe well, three inches or so, maybe four, depending on where you're at. But roads are pretty good, everything's melted, and uh, should have a good trip out on the highway. There's complete pricing information down in the description so you'll know all the options that are in this XSE. And there's a link to my website where you can go to get local pricing. Because if you're looking at a Camry, you're trying to get a feel for how much it costs, you really need to know the local pricing. So go to my website, get the local price. I think I'll include a link up here in a car too, but definitely down in the description. Okay, we're rolling on to the ramp. Hitting it at about 35. A little bit slower than we usually do because it's a good thing to be careful on days like today. You never know when there could be a frozen patch. Nice and smooth and flat, boy oh boy. Excellent. And we're gonna ease on up the ramp. We're at 50 right now. And usually I try and get to about 60 near the top of the ramp. I try to be as consistent as possible on these to compare it from vehicle to vehicle. Once I crest it, make the merge, then I'll give it a little bit more gas, get it up to speed. And here's 65. I'm hitting 68 a little bit early. Usually I don't do it until after I've crested this, but I'm going to go ahead and put this into adaptive cruise control. Take my foot off the gas and let it ride. All 2018 Camrys are equipped with Toyota Safety Sense. This package includes adaptive cruise control, which controls your distance between the car in front of you. It includes active lane keep, really nice stuff. And it includes automatic headlamps. Again, I'll give you a full rundown in the description that hits on all those technologies. This is important stuff that if you haven't driven a modern car that's equipped with it, boy, it makes a huge difference amount of difference when you're out on the highway it reduces stress if you don't like to use cruise control because you're afraid of not paying attention and running into the car in front of you with adaptive cruise that is no longer the issue adaptive cruise will slow down for you and i'll show you that as we get further up into traffic we're about halfway to the corkscrew where we get off of 295 and on to 195 and we are averaging about 36.6 miles per gallon. According to the display, you never want to trust those numbers too early into a loop. You need a whole bunch of miles to make sure they're accurate. We've rolled up behind a VW Beetle that's doing 61 in the center lane. Now our adaptive cruise is set for 68. So watch what happens when we move out to this left-hand lane. It will just take off for us slowly accelerate up to our preset speed of 68 and we will overtake that beetle. Inevitably what happens when you pass someone that's doing this they'll speed up and that seems to be what's happening here though not too much. Two miles until we get to the corkscrew and the average MPGs are at 35.5. As we approach the exit ramp, I follow the same procedure every time. I shut cruise control off. I roll into the ramp with my foot off the accelerator pedal. 
I let the car decelerate all on its own. Take it like 50. Now I'm on it again. There's a tough merge over here to the right. Make the merge. No traffic today. We're hitting this at about 43, which is a little bit higher than I'd want to go in. But again, foot off. We're just going to scrub speed off with friction. Once we get around to this point, now I'm on the throttle again gently. Camry is handling nice and flat. Feels great. And we're going to make another merge up here. This section is 55, and you really got to watch it. I say this so many times when I come through here. And on the way back, you'll see state police with folks pulled over. Folks fly through here. They don't pay attention to the fact that it's 55, and they get rightfully pulled for a ticket. We're just going to stay light. And as we go down from three lanes to two up here, we'll go back to cruise control. And watch this guy fly by. Not too smart. Let's add a staters. And we are back into the cruise control. Traffic tends to get a bit sticky up here with 130 and then the turnpike. That gives us a good opportunity to see how that uh, adaptive cruise control slows us down when it encounters cars in front of us. So right now the cruise is set for 68, but we're behind this Civic that's doing 64, and it's keeping distance. We can adjust the distance with a little button on the steering wheel that'll let us creep up closer, but it never lets you get really close. If you're one of those people that likes to sit on the bumper of the car in front of you, Adaptive Cruise won't let you do it. Why? Because it's not safe. Watch what happens when we go to full distance. It will give us a little bit more room, and what happens is it slows us down. We've got a merge coming over here. This person has to wait for us. Sorry. You see how I stretched out the space a bit. Now we're going to be getting off here at this next exit in a quarter of a mile. So at this point, at the top of the hill here, I know I can roll on in, so I'm going to turn the adaptive cruise off right here. And I'm going to coast on into the ramp, foot off. Yeah, we need to apply some brakes, of course, because this guy, even though he's got a Civic, he's slowing way down. When this is dry, you can come in here at a higher rate of speed. You got to be careful though. You never know what's in front of you. So here we are at the halfway point, sitting at the light in 35.3. Uh, Pretty good. We got a moment here. I'll take a look and see what it says here. Official EPA estimates are 22 city, 32 highway. So 35.3. I'm digging that. Let's see what we get on the way back. It tends to drop because on the way out, we're kind of going downhill. And on the way back, we're going uphill away from the Delaware River. And we're back onto the next ramp. Nice and smooth. About 40 at this point. A little faster than I should be going. And I'm going to ease on. I'd really like to stomp on it at this point. But right now we're up to 60. I follow the same procedure all the time. So to be fair, I'm not going to go all in and mess up the economy. And I'm not going to go ridiculously slow. Once I get to the top of this bridge and I know that I can use inertia, that helps when you accelerate to save a little bit of fuel. Accelerate downhill. 
let gravity do its work. Now we are back in cruise control at 68. That little run up the ramp and onto the highway did eat away at our MPG numbers, of course. We're at 33.8 at this point. Okay, we're cruising along at 67. As this pickup truck moves over, it may slow us down as we get closer to it. There, you can feel it there. Now we're down to 64, and we're holding at 64. Now as he picks up speed, we'll pick up speed right along with him, and he is back up to 67. Cool stuff. Now in this section, it's actually 55, so I'm gonna dial it down with the button on the steering wheel. We'll take it at 60. And one of the really nice things about this XSE is the heads-up display. You can see in front of you, not just how fast you're going, but also what the speed limit is. It has a camera that reads the speed limit signs and displays them right next to your MPH number. So you can see, oh, it's 55 here and I'm doing 59. Off onto the ramp. This one you can take with some speed. And I'm gonna do this in cruise control. I'm gonna dial it down to 46. You heard that beeping? That was the lane departure warning. Now, at this point, I'm going to dial it back up. It's going to let it accelerate all on its own. More lane departure warnings. You've got to be careful in this stretch because of the hidden potholes. And we're going to re-enter 295. Still under cruise. Dialing up the speed with my thumb. One of my favorite safety features is right there. Blind spot mirrors. So you know when someone is creeping up on you. We're averaging 33.3 at this point. The seats in this Camry XSE are quite comfortable. It's got two-way power lumbar up and back. And it works well for me. Sometimes you get lumbar where it just punches you and it almost hurts. This is not. The padding in these seats is right. The, the upholstery feels good. The bolsters are not intrusive. This is a long distance car. And we are into the sweepers. Average MPGs at 33.5. Getting near the end of our loop. Just about a mile to go. And here's our exit. Take it out of cruise control right about here. And I'll put my foot back on the accelerator pedal. It looks like we ended that one at 33.5. Just a touch over the spec. What do you say we try a loop with cruise control off? See if that makes a difference. Hitting this at about 42. It's a little wet, but it's feeling good. All right. Definitely a lot more lean in the first time. Move on over. And we are not going to use cruise control in this ride at all. So when I do the second loop without cruise control, I try to keep the speed between 60 and 72, varying depending on traffic conditions and also on geography. If we're going downhill, I try to pick up some speed. If we're going uphill, I lose a little bit. You can't do this stuff with cars in back of you. So you avoid doing it in traffic only do it when you know the road is clear. You don't want to annoy anybody with your 
fuel saving techniques. But there is something to be said for driving like a long distance trucker. If you watch how tractor trailer drivers operate, they do that. They pick up speeds on the downhills. They lose speed on the uphills because for a lot of guys, their profitability depends on how efficiently they drive. That fuel bill comes out of their pocket. They really do care about it. Sometimes you got to get there quickly. Sometimes you got to get there really efficiently. And if you're smart about how you apply your feet to the pedals, not just the accelerator pedal, it's the brake pedal too. If you're smart about the way that you treat those pedals, you can make a big difference in your overall fuel efficiency. It's all about driving smart, using inertia, being a polite and safe driver. All that stuff is key. So like right now, I'm sitting in the right lane. I'm doing about 61 miles per hour behind that little black sedan. I'm not getting in anybody's way. There's nobody behind me. I can drive with my foot off. I can use inertia. I can anticipate. I'm going to be smarter than the cruise control is. And right now, yeah, really early into the loop, but I'm averaging 39.5. My goal is to be at around 40 when we get to the corkscrew. Let's see if we can do it. Of course, if you want the most possible miles out of a gallon of fuel and you're driving a Camry, you'll want to opt for the Camry Hybrid because those are exceptional in town where most cars take a beating because of the stop and go driving. A hybrid can do quite well. But if you haven't sprung for the hybrid and you've got a V6, which is the thirstiest of them all, you can still get amazing mileage just by using simple driving techniques and paying a little bit of attention to the very cool gauges that are built in. So the center information display between the speedometer and the tachometer gives you a little thermometer dial, which is awesome, right? So in real time, it helps you see where you're at, when you can lighten up. And over on the big screen, over on the flat screen, you've got graphs. So you can look at it cumulatively. Now, we got some real sticky merges here. Your light on the pedal, just coast up, let them in, be polite. And the numbers right now, wow, really good, 42.3. We're headed into the corkscrew at about 39.4, I am foot off, just coasting in. And if you remember from early on in the video, early in the first loop, I said never trust your average MPG readings early on in a test loop. You need to have a bunch of miles rolled up. Well, total case in point, I was all excited that I thought I was going to have an unbelievable 42 mile per gallon run on this one. And that's not the case because, hey, you got to roll up miles to make sure it's accurate. So let's see where we're at by the time we're done with this loop here on the course group. We've got a Mercedes behind us. We're hitting this at about 45. The Mercedes is on the brakes. He's not confident in his vehicle, but I'm pretty confident in this Camry. The road is nice and dry. It's not frozen. We're up to 43. So it's warm enough that it's not going to be icy. Super stable through here at 42 miles an hour. Average MPG reader says uh, 40.3 at this point, but as we creep up the hill, it's going to go down. And now that Mercedes is on his accelerator pedal like mad, making up all the time that he lost by slowing down to the curve. Already rolling up on the halfway point. Numbers are still looking pretty good. Not nearly as crazy optimistic as they were, but still pretty good. I'll get a read for you when we roll up to the light. I 
nice and steady through here. Okay. Looks like 39.2. So we've come down a bit, but it's still pretty good and it's far above where we were with cruise control. And we are back on the ramp. Going to just roll on the throttle real easily through here. Folks are being kind and moving over. There's 55, 57. We'll let this fella merge. Come on. So we are now at 60 and accelerating slowly down the hill. We'll take it up to 65. And the MPG's right now down to 37.6 because, hey, we had to accelerate. It's not a huge loop and every time you're on the pedal, it makes a difference. So 37.7, let's see where we end up for the full loop. Rolling into the 195 to 295 ramp at 37 even. Taking it through here at 50. Real light on the pedal. Watching out for those hidden potholes. up to 65. When you're trying to get great fuel economy numbers and you're not using cruise control, it takes some concentration. If your mind wanders a little bit, if you turn up the music and start grooving to it, your foot gets a little heavier on the pedal, you start going faster, you're going to use more fuel. When you get right down to it, it's speed. The faster you go, the more fuel you're going to use. There are variations in there, but go faster, use more fuel. You make the decision of what's most important to you. You want to get there quick, it's going to cost you more. Can you go a little slower to save a couple of bucks? Is that important to you? Then go for that. Into the sweepers at 36.2. Numbers are down from our peak, of course, but looking better than the first loop for sure. And we are on the ramp off the highway, finishing up our second loop. This was the one without cruise control. And it looks like the numbers wind up at 36.1. My week with the Camry XSE is just about up. I gotta turn it in and swap it to something else at lunchtime. I gotta say, I'm gonna be kind of sad to see this one go. It delivers just about everywhere. It's comfortable, it's quick, it's stealthy. Rides and handles pretty well. There's paddle shifters. If you want to go into boy racer mode, there's three driving modes, eco, normal, and sport. And just to reiterate, those highway tests were all in normal mode. I haven't spent any time at all in eco mode. I did spend a wee bit of time in sport, as you'll see in the zero to 60, which is at the tail of this video. Overall, this is a complete package. It's the best Camry ever built. Some things that I'd like to have, a heated steering wheel, a place to plug stuff in it in the back seat. There's no ports back there, no 12 volt, no USB, but we do have two USBs here. And the one thing across the line that Toyota well, I don't want to say fall short, but differs from everybody else is they don't offer Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support. They're still not giving into that. Maybe eventually they will. I can't wait to drive the Accord to see how it matches up to this. 
other than the zero to 60, which is right after this, that's all I got for today. Thanks as always for watching to helping me live the dream. If you're interested in a Camry and you're definitely shopping, you'll want to go up to that card up top there or down in the description. Go to my website, mpgomatic.com, and get that local price. The zero to 60 was really tough to get shopped because of the weather. Now, when it's cold and it's frozen and wet, cars just don't hook up. So this zero to 60 is a little bit different in that I did it with a bit of a roll. Otherwise, off the line, it was just spin, traction control, all that stuff. Nah, you'll like this. Check it out.